Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. Today's episode is pretty much going to give you a full update as to what I've been working on over the last few months. So it's going to be jam-packed with uh, old project updates, some new projects that you haven't seen yet. I've got some parts and materials that I've been picking up from all over the place. Um, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first thing I wanted to talk about is my high voltage transformer which is a big focus of mine at the moment um, the first thing I've done since the last time you saw it is I've got this cap here to seal off all of the um, low voltage outputs I also got myself some federal connectors which are all plugged in these are the three pin connectors you can see them there um, so they're in pretty good condition the only thing that um, is wrong with them is that these rubber boots are slightly mouldy this one in particular um, but apart from that everything is 100% I still need to get some new cable and rewire it um, this thing here was posing to be a bit of a problem because it's an Amphenol 28-6 fitting which is a mil spec fitting which always makes it a little bit harder to source um, even RS components don't even have this one their line stops at the 28 dash something whatever it was it was the one below this one unfortunately so I couldn't get it from them either um, and either way that would have cost me about a couple of hundred dollars just to get the fitting just to put some power into this thing which was starting to get on my nerves but then finally I found one it was on its way from Israel it arrived on Friday it's sitting at the post office so we can put power into this now all I've got to do is get some cable to wire up that socket um, I do have one last problem which is I don't the fact that I don't have a plug to plug up this small hole because it's a special sized hole with a very fine thread and I have looked everywhere high and low and I can't find it so I'm going to have to resort to getting it made. Um, I've got the specs on that just in case there's somebody out there who's got the time and the inclination to help me out with this because um, if someone could make me a little end cap um, fitting so that I can plug this up we are pretty much ready to go I mean I can get that cable pretty easily I can get the wiring for um, the input power pretty easily and I also have myself some transformer oil um, which is the next thing I wanted to talk to you about because I've been working my way into getting into this bloke's factory this guy that I met and um, I finally, after a few weeks of massaging my way in there, I got down there. He not only gave me three jerry cans full of transformer oil, but he actually gave me the jerry cans as well. Um, and he let me keep them, and he said that next time I'm down, he'd be happy to top them up for me. Um, so there's a total of 60 litres there. That transformer is only going to take about 50 55 litres, um, so I'll have more than enough, but I can get as much as I want, and that's brand new oil. It's not salvaged out of an old transformer or anything like that. And I was actually looking into buying new oil, and that stuff's going to be you know, like something like $3 a litre, so there's about $180 worth of brand new oil there, um, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Now, this guy was very kind, he gave me a whole bunch of stuff and I'll show you some of those uh, as we go along in this video but um, we're talking high power stuff here because this guy fixes um, distribution transformers and um, all the big stuff grid related power supplies so um, I'll show you some of the cool stuff in a minute. Now I've been doing a bit of work with my vacuum chambers recently and I decided to build a bit of a manifold so that I can 
just plug my vacuum chamber in and pretty much pump down from any size fitting from an 8mm to a 4mm, quarter inch, 6mm and another 8mm port there. The vacuum line is a 6mm. So it's pretty versatile. I've got a up to air valve here so that we can put an isolation valve on our chamber and then when we finish the pump down we can release this valve here releasing the pressure on the manifold so that we can disconnect the manifold and the line from the chamber which will stop plasmas getting back into the uh, vacuum pump. Uh, I've also attached this vacuum gauge here it's a little brass one, good quality and um, yes yeah, so I just need the adhesive now just to fit it all off and we are good to go so once I've done that I'll be able to do a bit of a pump down on a couple of things make sure it holds the vacuum and then we can do a few tests and I'll do a video on that this is a 42 inch LCD TV that I picked up um, unfortunately it only works intermittently well it did work intermittently until I took it apart I've located the problem I've removed all of the capacitors from the main power board which is sitting right there um, so I've removed all the caps and you can see the holes where they were marked out there 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 there's about nine of them all around this board and uh, I've ordered some new ones so when they arrive I will solder them in and uh, we'll get that board back in the TV and we should have a few more years out of that TV for five dollars. This is the brass end cap that I need made for my high voltage transformer so if anyone out there has the skills and the technology I would really appreciate it if someone could make me one of these. It's a um, it's the end cap that's going to look similar to that except that's a silencer um, I'm just getting this just to show you roughly what it's going to look like in real life uh, the one that I need is going to have a, a hole drilled all the way through here 8.4 millimeter diameter hole and the top will be tapped with a 1 8 BSPT thread as you can see represented by the green here and here got the 8.4 millimeter hole looking down and uh, the 1 8 BSPT thread into the head of the main plug. Um, the head's 32 millimeters wide, 6 to 8 millimeters high, and then we've got at least 10 millimeters of thread to fully engage the um, transformer. It can be slightly longer, doesn't really matter, it's not going to fail with anything. Um, another critical dimension here is between the inside of the thread here to the inside of the thread here or which is actually the inside of the hole to the inside of the hole uh, is 17.8 millimeters exactly and then you've got your thread pitch to add on to either side there which is less than half a millimeter on a 25 threads per inch um, that's pretty much it it's fairly simple it's just that I can't buy it off the shelf so um, yeah, if I can get one of those within the next four to six weeks, I would be very happy. Um, I don't need it right this minute because I'm still working on the power supply that is going to power this high voltage transformer. I picked up this SWR and field strength meter from a Trash and Treasure and it's still in its original box. The instructions are inside. It's in very good condition. Um, Obviously we've got the antenna input here and the transmitter input down the bottom. A couple of mounting holes on the back, nothing on the sides. And the adjustment on the front. And um, there we go, so that'll be a handy piece of kit and it'll come in useful later on down the track. Now when I was down at the factory getting my transform oil, I also picked up a whole bunch of other stuff that this guy was giving me and keeping in mind he works on distribution transformers and all the big stuff um, he gave me a couple of these temperature gauges here this is actually a uh, 
an oil level indicator for an oil filled transformer which would have a float attached to this gear assembly here through this hole in the shaft and as the oil level changes the um, dial turns around and that dial actually activates a minimum and maximum set point relay I guess you could call it and um, the wiring comes through here and there you go this thing I don't think I will ever use but um, it's a massive high pressure release valve There's a massive spring in there and um, yeah I think that's just going to scrap I don't think I'll ever use that it's pretty chunky and heavy uh, I also picked up a dead break which is what they use for underground high voltage wiring so you've got a receptacle in there cover that up and then the other terminal on the other end here uh, I got two milk crates full of high voltage bushings these two are actually feed throughs and they weigh a ton um, I don't know what the hell these things are he did tell me but I was just too excited and looking around and I didn't pay attention so I might ask him about those and I want to show you the bushings I got about five or six bushings in there but um, bushings are bushings he gave me this thing here an integrated safety detector which um, allows you to monitor your oil levels and temperature and also the gas content in your transform oil um, so you'd actually fit that off to a fitting on your oil fuel transformer and not only can you measure the temperature and the oil and the gas content in the uh, residual vacuum but you can activate um, circuits based on the relays and the circuitry that's built into it so um, a pretty handy tool to have um, and it, apparently it's still working so there you go now all of these bushings as well that he's given me are all good quality and in working order this is what they would actually use I couldn't even be bothered pulling that out this is what they actually use in um, on-site repairs so yeah, if it's good enough for the grid it should be good enough for my experiments he also gave me a whole bunch of these 1kV um, 50 millimeter square earth leads already terminated and he gave me a whole bunch of I'll show you that actually so got a few more here and I've also got this guy here which is again 50 millimeter square just a lot more ins insulation on it terminated at both ends I've obviously stripped that to make some more connections on that earth lead um, but yeah that was pretty handy I'd say and not only did he give me that and the oil and all that other stuff but um, he gave me a whole bunch of bags of terminals um, small ones and he also gave me a whole bunch of these much larger terminals and feed throughs and well, these are worth a few dollars each so I was pretty stoked to get that and not have to buy them as I need them um, so there you go it was definitely worthwhile hassling this bloke and um, once I got down there and told him exactly what I was doing and showed him a few videos he couldn't be more helpful if he tried this transformer is another piece of kit that I picked up from the Trash and Treasure we've got the 6.3 volts output here, We've got 100 volts and 200 volts DC it's a sturdy little steel box solid construction and um, screw terminals for attaching whatever you want um, I only picked it up because it had the 6.3 volts and that might come in handy for heated filaments like hot cathode vacuum tubes you can't have too many power supplies uh, if we plug that in, you can see it lights up. I've already put it on the multimeter so I know it works, but it is missing the um, dome bezel to cover the light bulb there, which is just 
sitting exposed out of the lid at the moment. Uh, so I will find a bezel cover for that and that's a handy little transformer. Now if you've been watching my channel for a while you might remember I was talking about building a magnetically quenched spark gap. That idea sort of went straight to the can once I did a bit more experimenting and realized that the stronger the dielectric field that you're putting through the electrodes the stronger the magnetic field that's required to quench that. Um, so it's not really going to work with high power stuff so um, I sort of can that idea but I definitely still want to build it because they will come in useful for smaller sensitive field strength meters and detectors connected to receiving coils and things like that but um, yeah for the moment it's just gone to the can because of the fact that it's not high on my priority list so until I've got transmitters built there's no point in having spent time building receivers and receiving devices and meters for these receiving devices um, so yeah we'll get back to it but not high on the priority list at the moment it's pretty much ready to go I've got all the parts I've just got to drill the holes and stick it all together and we're good to go should work pretty well but yeah maybe next year now I also picked this thing up little bell couldn't resist taking it home um, it is a plastic construction it's just sort of made to look like ceramic but um, pretty solid 12 volt coils if I can get that to zoom in for you there we go you can see the little bell action going on there so I'll plug that in and we can see it going so there you go that works um, I don't know why I picked it up I just think it looked cool and my kids were actually pretty amazed just to see how it worked on the inside we've got one of those digital ones so there you go it was well worth it just to show them what was inside it um, I also picked up this thing which is almost against my religion but for a dollar I couldn't resist picking it up so it's my first hot glue gun there you go I'll probably never ever use it but it's there just in case I need it uh, I also picked up a couple of pairs of pliers, precision pliers, if I can get this thing to zoom again for us. There we go. These things line up fairly well. They don't look like they've had much use and um, they're in fairly good, fairly good condition. So, um, yeah, you can never have too many little different types of pliers for different jobs it's good to have the right tool for the right job I also found this which is a knurling tool for my little hobby lathe I love a knurled finish you can always get a good grip no matter how oily or greasy or slippery your hands are um, also found this I only picked it up because it again has the knurled finish on the handle so it looks like someone's just welded a screwdriver onto the end of this and what maybe could have been a punch of some sort in its past life looks like they've just welded that screwdriver straight to the end of that and cleaned it up uh, but I might turn that in into something who knows some sort of poker or probe or something anyway useful little screwdriver thing there now another thing I picked up recently was this little scribe uh, it already had the tip and everything in there it didn't actually come with this stopper here and that grub screw it actually came with this larger one here 
got Len Ferguson written on the side. Um, so that square block came on this shorter scribe here. And it wasn't big enough for some panels that I've been working on recently, so I had to make a bigger one. So I found this old rod, which I pulled out of a uh, printer, cleaned up the edges, and as you can see here, I've drilled a small hole to um, put the scribe tip in, um, and then I just had to drill another small hole in the end. Um, that was actually a bit of an issue because I've only got a pedestal drill and a vise, so I had to make a tool so that I can make this tool. I'll show you that tool that I made in a second. Um, but then the only other thing I needed was another stopper, so I found this brass collar. I just had to open it up to receive that 6.5 or 6 mil diameter shaft, and it already had a little grub screw in there, so that was perfect. So now I've got a little one, and I've also got this bigger one, which is about 300 millimeters long, and they're both adjustable, obviously. Now, the tool that I had to make to make that tool was this tool here. So this thing is just a standard chuck. I have welded it to a piece of flat bar just drilled a hole in the base of the flat bar there so that um, it can receive the rod and I've just got two mounting holes on either side so that actually attaches to the plate on my pedestal drill uh, via these two holes here and the chuck sits over the centre of the hole in that plate and then I can just feed up a rod through the centre and then align that rod with the chuck from the uh, pedestal drill and then bolt everything down, remove the rod, put the drill bit in and we can drill a centered hole in the end of a rod. It's something that I've had to do a couple of times and I've done it in a very bodgy way in the past so this worked pretty well this time around um, so I'm thinking it'll come in handy a fair few times in the future. Anyone that plays with high voltage has surely seen a flyback transformer. These are a dime a dozen out of uh, old CRT TVs. Um, now even when they're not around anymore, these CRTs, there, the flybacks are going to still be available in plasma cutters and all sorts of equipment. They're a necessary evil. Uh, so I don't really make an effort to stop off and pull them out of TVs anymore. But what I will stop for is a really old TV because when you find the old ones you tend to find the bigger more powerful components in them this thing's about you know six seven inches long it's a 200 mega ohm 25 kV resistor it was connected to the output of a flyback transformer multiplier module and the other end of it was just going straight to ground. So I definitely had to have that. I didn't know what the hell it was when I saw it, and then when I pulled it out, I realized what I had. And um, yeah, obviously that had to come home with me. So that was pretty cool. The other thing you can find in the really old TVs are these flybacks here. This one here is, it's gotta be my oldest flyback that I own. You can see it's got the wax covered secondary. This section here is the primary coil. This blue wire is just my primary that I had connected to a halogen, 12 volt halogen light transformer just to test it to make sure that the secondary coil was still working, which it was, and the diode also works. Um, these things when they came out were rated to about 30 kV and after a bit of research I found that uh, they downrated that to about 25-26 kV I believe and it's got a 1.2 volt filament um, so that's it there it's a pretty cool little thing I might mount that on a base and that's the original container that this whole assembly was mounted in as well it's like some sort of 
clear plastic or ceramic material of some sort. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool, I think. That is a really cool flyback transformer. These are the capacitors from that TV that I've showed you. Uh, these are the ones that I've pulled out. You can see how they've just blown. You can see the brown discoloration, which is the electrolyte leaking out of them. And you can see where the electrolyte has just dripped down on some of the other components on the board. Um, but now my new capacitors have turned up. The replacement ones for these. The main criteria I had was that they were the uh, same height because we were limited because some of the um, capacitors were mounted at sort of under a heat sink so they had to be the right height and I also needed to make sure that the pitch between the leads was the same as well as obviously all of the technical specs for capacitance and for temperature and low ESR so I whack these in sorry these ones in and uh, we'll plug in that TV and hopefully it should work fine. I wanted now. to build something that was a lot closer to what Tesla was working with in his Colorado Springs experiments where he spoke about his rotary spark gap generator with electrodes on either side going out to a ball. So this is what I've come up with here. So this is it. The ball, which is again a stainless steel ball, is attached to the threaded rod, which was, where did I put it, here it is, which was this thing here, we just cut it off at the base there and threaded that straight in, you can see the joint which is nicely soldered all the way around, um, I'll show you short clip of the making of these as well in a minute um, but that is going to be a sealed we'll seal that up that end um, there'll be a sealed fitting on that end and on this end because they're eight millimeter threads this one was the standard thread this side was the reverse thread um, I've put this welding tip you can see it's got the small diameter hole on the end there uh, I'll just put that welding tip in there and I've covered it over with a rubber grommet from a flyback from a from a TV. On the top I've put a four millimeter fitting in there. I've just drilled that out and tapped it. I'll put it end up putting a um, grub screw in that one and plugging that up. And um, this will be pressurized air running through here, quenching the electrodes on the rotary spark gap as it goes around between the two units here. So I've got two of them made. I just need to finish off the bottom there and then I've got some ceramic tube which will fit around this main shaft here and serve as a holder and this will be able to be adjusted so that we can adjust the gap. And we've got finer adjustment by opening these up because these ones will actually be facing off against some larger balls which I have started working on as well. Uh, this is the larger ball here. So these ones are about 45 millimeters in diameter. Um, and then these ones here are about four inches or, or about 100 millimeters in diameter. You can see how it's just been soldered all the way around, nice and neatly by my old mate Barry. I'll show you a bit of footage of him in action. Um, but yeah, stainless steel rod, not tube, um, soldered to the stainless steel ball, and that'll face off against that stainless steel ball. And again, this one will sit inside this ceramic tube here, and we can adjust that because it fits quite snugly. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a pretty big rotary spark gap, and... I'm looking forward to turning it on. These spheres will actually act to help control the voltage at the breakdown um, and in turn control the frequency more accurately. And according to Tesla it worked pretty well so we'll give it a go. He's also tried a couple of other arrangements so we'll try a few of those and I've also got a few of my own ideas as well. This air quenched 
idea being one of them. He didn't have that in his rotary spark gap. Um, but I've found that the, the air quenching is like the best way, the internal air quenching is the best way to keep your electrodes cool. That's what most people have problems with uh, in regards to running their Tesla coils is that their spark gaps get too hot. Um, I've run my Tesla coils at relatively high power um, and in some cases I've pushed the neon sign transformer to twice their rated capacity of 2 amps to about 4 and I think in one case we've got it up to about 5 amps and the spark gap remained cold to the touch, not cool but cold to the touch so this internal air quenching is essential for prolonged operation of a rotary spark gap um, as I said I've got a couple of other ideas but this is a good starting point so um, I mean if it worked for Tesla it should work for us the other thing I might do is just to replace this welding tip here with this air fitting um, because it's got a pointed end and it would just work better so that's what I want to do all I've got to do is make a fitting to adapt that thread to the 8mm thread there. I still haven't figured out what that thread is, but we'll get to that one day soon. Um, at the moment, I'm more focused on finishing up the housing, and I've also got a machine a flat spot on this edge here so that we've got a nice seal up against the surface here instead of sitting on that radius and not getting a proper seal because I've only got about 2 millimeters of thread in there so I'd be lucky if I if I got about two or three full thread revolutions tied in there. And we want to run this at about 100 psi or more so gotta make sure it can hold the pressure. But trial and error, we'll give it a go, see what happens. I just got a parcel in the mail today, so let's open it up. It's from Israel so I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Amphenol 286 fitting for my high voltage transformer. Hopefully it's the right one. And it all works fine. And there it is. It looks like the right one. There you go.
down. Okay, the all important check to make sure it all fits and that the fitting is not cross threaded or anything. Well, seems to fit pretty well. Just got to rewire that now and um, find that stupid plug. We'll get one made, or hopefully someone can make me one. And then we're ready to fill it up with oil and give it a test run.